Why is it impossible to get apart? It's just a glue stick. Why? Ooh. Good for that glue stick, dude. Amazon basics. They're not kidding when they say all purpose glue stick. Took a solid 12 hours. Let's wait the proper amount of time for that to dry and get it in a mold box. Wow. Just wow. Just get a good look at that mouth. Okay, added those side fins. It's got a beautiful top and bottom profile. Beautiful side profile. Built around a six-aught beast hook. What a profile. <laughs> I'm giving it its last little 400 grit sanding and clear coat while it's attached to the bottom of the mold box. I think that will really help with, if you get flashing under the bait, on an open pour master like this, it's so annoying because you have to cut it with scissors and you have to be very careful. If you can get it perfect where there's silicone's not able to get under there and create flashing, it's so much more convenient. So I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna have it to the bottom of the mold box. I'm gonna spray its last clear coat on it. Then I'm gonna put the rest of the mold box together and then just wow. Hopefully that seals it off good enough. This is the best looking mold box I've ever made. Not on the outside, on the inside. So with this step, I actually need to do one to 1.3 by weight when mixing this silicone. I've heard great stuff about this silicone too, smooth on. Typically I'm more of an alumalite guy, but this smooth on stuff, apparently it's really good. I got myself half a kilo from the other side of the world. People in Europe use this stuff more apparently. Oh wow. Oh. Oh my goodness, what am I doing? An interesting color. What's this one? Another interesting color. I'm gonna go for a 10 ounce mold. Nah, let's go for a 12 ounce mold. It's probably 14. Okay, let's go for a 14 ounce mold. So 7.06 times 1.3. So I need 9.1 or 9.2 of this now. Part B, right? Yeah. Oh, it's looking like that needed stirred before I poured. At least this side looks like it needs stirred. One second. These silicones have a shelf life. They are not good forever. This one started hard packing and some clear stuff came to the top. Hopefully that will not affect the performance of this silicone. 
Went a little further than 9.2, but I think this is the hardener, so it doesn't matter. I'm gonna mix this till my heart's content, right up until it's content. It's a nice thin silicone. That makes it user-friendly when it's thin. You can be less concerned about pouring it perfectly. With thicker silicones, it's a pain in the butt because you have to pour it a specific way for there not to be air pockets and more bubbles. There will always be bubbles unless you're pressure casting. We're just gonna try to minimize here. I really hope this is enough silicone. It's very annoying to mix up two batches for one mold. You gotta be really patient too when you're pouring a mold. You gotta let that silicone run. It really depends on the mold. For this one, I probably don't have to be patient, so I lied. I could probably just glob this on, but I'm trying to make this very nicely in a very professional manner, you know? This is gonna be the smoothest sides to a mold I've ever had on a mold too. I clear coated the mold box. All the detail-y stuff's covered, so I'm gonna just pour this in here now. Like that hook slot on the top, I wanted to make sure that filled in before I trapped air inside of it. That's about it. I shimmed the mold up too. I got stencils and razor blades <laughs> leveling this thing out as best I could. I think 14 ounces was right on. Probably could have done with 13 actually. So yeah, you see little bubbles like that rising out of the silicone, that's healthy. That is what you're looking for. You don't want those bubbles against your master inside of your mold. Hopefully all of them come to the surface and this is a good silicone. I should not be experimenting with silicones while doing something like this, but I am. We have finally achieved full cure, or demold cure, or whatever you call it. It actually takes 12 hours for this to fully cure, but you can demold it in three. I think just pulling it straight off of the back here is gonna be most effective. I don't wanna ruin this box though, in case I need it again. Okay, that is on there. Boop. It cracked off. Nice, come off nicely, woo! Oh, that is a beautiful, beautiful seam line. No chunks left. We lost a little bit of silicone to the master just behind this fin right here, but that's not that big of a deal. I can, I can easily fix that. There's a smidget behind the other fin too. I'm gonna just fix it right now, actually. Fixed. Oh, I should probably show you. I'm just sand sitting here looking at it. Look at the gloss finish on the inside of the mold. Now let's see the finish on the outside of the mold. Oh, it's tearing nicely. That's good. Beautiful. Gonna need some delicate flashing trimming. Very minor. I'll be back once this is all trimmed up. I made two of these, by the way. It just turns out so well, it's amazing. Whoops. I did not have the camera on for any of that, but I poured one and I have a good feeling about it. And I've already poured some at my friend's house last night. I, I'm getting a pretty good feel for this mold. Actually, I'll show you this one after. Let's demold one and then I'll show you what I got. Oh boy. I get so excited about these open pour silicone baits because there's so much you can do with them. And I did quite a bit to this one. I cut off the tail. And I'm gonna pour it red. That way you can see me pouring something. Look how bright that tail is. It's just a gorgeous look. Fantastic action. Oh, speaking of that, let's get that uh, bathtub test footage up here. Let's, let's see that. Oh, hey, Penny. What, what do you, oh, goodbye. Goodbye, Penny. I'll wait for this water to fill up and then I can talk to you guys. Okay, as intended, this bait is not a paddle tail. It's a flap tail. It doesn't stay up and then catch water and kick like this. It comes down a little bit and the flat style of the tail starts to get imparted on and it does a, a wave and it's very loose. This is a finesse style bait on the bottom. So it pause it, that tail comes up, see how it sits? 
it comes up and then it's in a perfect position to catch water and then you give it that twitch and it kicks it or it moves it like that very wide action from minimal retrieve so it's like it's kicking itself forward on the bottom now I'm extremely excited. I was excited before because this bait alone is just gorgeous, but the action on this is as intended as well. Okay, this is becoming one of my favorite baits. It really feels like a specialty kind of bait, you know? Finesse bottom swim baiting. In the swim bait world, getting a bait to the bottom isn't as much of a thing as it is just having something swimming towards the surface and drawing those fish up to bite. But putting a swim bait down on the bottom, mingling around in their territory, that could make some things happen, you know? I look forward to making some things happen with this bait this year. Not now, though. That screwed up my auto white balance. <laughs> okay, I'm back. I also thought that I should mention, look at this collapsibility. Like, fish comes in from the side, bites the bait. Just a, just a light squeeze, and there's like a half inch of bait to hook point but then it's just in the bait. It's inside of the bait, a quarter inch deep. I just get the feeling the hookup ratio is gonna be spectacular. The bottom of the beast hook and the lead and stuff will just be buried in the silt and the mud and dragging it along, kicking up mud. Just a bottom feeder sucker fish having problems. Don't eat me. Oh no. Techniques, man. I don't know if it's gonna make much of a difference, but I poured this very clear color. This isn't just clear, it's got a little bit of motor oil in it. And then I poured this darker, flaky, pearlescent, beautiful color in with it. I didn't laminate it, I just like poured it while it was still hot and it seeped into it. And I'm hoping that that's gonna give it some depth. I try stuff like that all the time, but most of the time it doesn't do much, it doesn't work, it doesn't look good, but maybe this will. Hundreds of you have asked me where I got this shirt it's an airbrushed shirt from somebody on Instagram. One second. Gray Piep. Piep. This person's first post was this shirt that this person airbrushed for me. What's your name? Artist doing art stuff. Nothing like airbrushing tees. Gray Piep. Thank you. This is an awesome shirt. I thought this shirt deserves a proper shout out. So, thank you. Just a little bit of Aztec gold for a lateral line. What a stunning pour. Put that little bit of extra red around the sucker. Got the fins red, nice white belly. It's not actually white, it's like an orangish white. I added orange highlight and white highlight and stuff, but let's give it a bit. We'll demold this, see how pretty it is. Prepare yourselves for a spiffy demold here. Ooh. Oh, I'm liking the colors. That is some spiffiness. I'm like right away I'm looking at the top here seeing if there's differences. It looks like the dark green or the darker green or the more visible green settled to the bottom and the clear is on the top. It didn't do the splotchiness like I wanted. It just kind of evened out and settled. Totally fine still. Doesn't it look just fantastic from that profile, that angle? Those fins sticking out and stuff. A little bit of extremely cautious heat setting always makes a bait look better out of a silicone mold too. It glosses things over. Let's put some eyes on this. So yeah, there's one poured. I think that's the end of this video pretty much.
Love this bait. Nothing more to say. I'll catch a fish with it later, I promise. I will. I can't wait. It'll be in some bonus fishing somewhere. On to the next bait. Just wow. What a profile. Oh, that is a beautiful, beautiful. It's just a glue stick. Oh boy. Oh. Don't eat me. Oh no. Oh. What do you, oh. Bye bye. Bye bye, Penny. <laughs>